Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India. And as a couple of you guys probably know already, I got a flex radio earlier this summer. I got a really good deal on a used flex 6300 with a Maestro. And the deal was so good that I couldn't say no, especially because I will be doing a little bit more traveling in my new job. I'm in a process of changing career paths and uh, my new job will probably have more travel than my previous job which doesn't take much though because my previous job didn't have any travel at all nonetheless though um, that's one of the reasons I got my flex and I've started looking into how to operate the flex remotely because well that's what you got to do when you have a flex and that's what I want to have the flex for so I've done a couple of changes to the shack. First of all, I had to replace my old tuner, uh, the LDG Z100. Not because that's a bad tuner, but because it has no way of communicating with the flex. And when using remote, I can't really push the button in the shack. So I've replaced that with uh, LDG Z11 Pro 2. And this tuner is partly uh, paid by you guys, the viewers, through ad revenue. And um, also, Chris Tech, uh, my favorite ham radio dealer, has provided me this tuner for a reduced price in order to do some content on it and see how well it works together with the Flex. And the reason I went for that tuner is not because it's the best tuner in the world, because it's not. But it works and it tunes automatically on RFN. So the moment I press the tune button on my flex, either locally or remotely, the tuner starts tuning. And that's important. So those are the changes I've done to the shack. So let's talk a little bit about the philosophy behind me running remote though. And I have a couple of scenarios that I've thought up for running remotely, which kind of helps me prepare a little bit for it. If this is what really will happen, well, time will show. But I got three scenarios that I've thought out. First of all, from a hotel room. And that's pretty easy. In a hotel room, I have stable internet or stable internet usually. And I have the ability to use a computer. So I've set up my Microsoft Surface Go uh, to be the remote control unit there. And I made a PTT switch from just a button and FTDI to USB controller. Uh, and that hooks up to the flex radio and can be configured as a PTT button. Works really nice and allows me to plug that into the PC with just a USB cable. I'll be the Fox in the tester. Then I got a gaming headset, which works fine. I use that in the shack as well. Plug that into PC, run smart SDR, and uh, you know what? I have the perfect, <laughs> perfect remote setup. And that works really well. And that allows me not only to use this in a hotel room, but it also allows me to, as you've seen in the B-roll photos that I've rolled over here, to use that in my living room or in my porch, in the kitchen while cooking dinner, um, or let's say in the bathroom, if, if I'm so inclined, we're all middle-aged men here. So you know what I'm talking about. Nonetheless, that's one of the scenarios where a computer is ideal. A computer would also work, let's say in an airport while waiting for a plane, but then probably for Digimodes, but the flex allows for that as well. Um, as far as the Digimode software is concerned, the the radio is just an app, so the software sees the radio. So that's a possibility. What is What will probably be a better solution at an airport, though, would be the iOS app, which I can run from my iPhone. I can also run that app, let's say, if I'm at home in the couch watching TV or watching YouTube. I can run some FD8 while watching TV on that app really, really easy. Although it doesn't come cheap. This app is insanely expensive. First of all, as you can see here, the app is, I think it's 499 US dollars or similar in local currency. But that's only to get you started though. In order to remote control your flex, which I guess is the reason most people get their smart SDR app for iPhone or iPad, let's call it iOS just to be simple. 
you need to pay a whopping 79 US dollars or similar in local currency. Doesn't stop there though. If you want a logbook in the software, there's another seven US dollars or similar in local currency. So by that, I'm up, let's say about $90 to get this running on my phone. For me, it's worth it. It might not be worth it for you though, because the smart SDR software for Windows PC is completely free. So might not be good for you. It's good for me. That allows me to use this app wherever. If I'm waiting for someone, if my wife and my kids are going shopping and I'm bored at a mall, I can use it. I can run FT8 pretty much everywhere with this app. So for me, it's, it's a value added purchase. The third scenario I've thought about for using the Flex is on vacation, illustrated here by on the beach. That is not too hard now. I could use the iPhone app for that. Or I could use the computer if, let's say I have a table there and something, but I'm guessing the iOS app is, is easier. Plug in a couple of AirPods or wired headphones, um, use the PTT button on the screen and you can operate radio just as good as you're at home. The thing is though, I haven't really tried this portable yet. I've experimented a lot at home with it. I've tested out both logging in from my local network and then hook my devices up to my cell phone and using 4G to, to do that. That works fine. But those are my philosophies for using the Flex Radio remotely. And I don't know what you guys think. Is, is this worth it? The Flex makes it easy. It's not necessarily an, an expensive route, but it's, it's probably the easiest remote route. Is it worth doing these kind of hassles to be able to operate remotely on the road, remotely when doing whatever? I think so, thus far. And that just leaves one challenge, and I, I really like some uh, feedback from you guys on this. And that's remote power on and off. At the moment, my remote power on off switch is my wife, which is kind of mood dependent. Let's put it that way. Let's just hope she doesn't watch this video. If she does, um, I might not have an on off switch and that's why I need a plan B. Um, and there are a couple of different, uh, or a couple of different things I need for that to work. First of all, I need a way to turn my power supply on and off. And for that, I'm, I've rigged up my entire house with Philips Hue, uh, smart lighting and smart outlets. So a smart outlet might be the easiest way of doing that and just turning it on from my phone. Then it's the radio part because the Flex is an SDR. It just doesn't just turn on and you really need to give it a soft boot and a soft power off. But Flex has thought about that. There's a um, RCA phono connector in the back. If you short those pins, you turn the radio on. If you remove the short, you turn the radio off. So that could be fixed with a relay. And there's a couple of different routes here to go and I haven't really decided on which route to use here. Should I use a ready-made solution with a smart relay um, just to get something that works? Or should I go the ham route of uh, creating something with an Arduino or perhaps a Raspberry Pi, which is connected to the internet and gives me full control, but the possibility of failure on the system. I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided if I just want it as an appliance or as a hobby project. I'm thinking the appliance route might be the smartest one since I'm going to operate this away from the shack and I'm kind of dependent on it working but I haven't decided yet. Let me know down in the comments what you think about that approach to it. And that's that's pretty much it now on, on my starting first starting steps on remote operation with the Flex. Have you done this? Let me know down in the comments. Do you think this is interesting? Let me know. Is this content you didn't like? Well, you haven't gotten this far, but if you've gotten this far, let me know down in the comments. You know the drill. Also, click that like button. It really helps the algorithm. It really helps people discover my videos. And also, if you want to help support the channel, and as you've seen on the tuner bit, every bit of money that I get into the channel 
I spend on getting stuff that helps me make content for you guys. There are a couple of options for that down below. There are super thanks, there are super chats. I don't think super chats work on videos, Never mind. I got a patron, I got YouTube memberships, I got buy me a coffee. So everything is greatly appreciated, but only, and I'm gonna stress this, only do this if you can't afford it. If you can't afford it, spend your money on something useful and not a middle-aged influencer on YouTube. And my cat's down here, so I really got to stop the recording. Thank you for listening to my rambling for, for this video. And uh, see you down the bands, and see you in my next video, 7-3.